Welcome back to another episode of Ask the Techies. I'm D. Lee Beard. Sorry it's been a while since so we had a video out. Uh, had a few things uh, kind of get in the way, but hopefully we're back on track again. Got more of your viewer questions. In fact, we're a little backlogged on that. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to get to a few of them right now. Uh, first off, I uh, have one from Chuck. And Chuck says, first of all, I want to tell you how happy I am that you're back and in HD. Thanks. I'm glad to be. <laughs> when watching your show, you often smoothly zoom in on the computer screen. How do you do this? Well, Chuck, that's a very good question. We use a little program called ScreenFlow. Um, and you can kind of see it down here in our, our dock a little bit. Uh, but if you go to search for it on the web, you can find the ScreenFlow software um, by Telestream. And it's about 99 bucks, as you can see right there. And what we do is with ScreenFlow, what it does, it captures everything that's happening on the computer screen. And so it, it captures all this video. And then as soon as you're done, it has a file all ready for you to work with. And then what you can do is you can actually then edit it right there. And they give you some nice little plugins to actually zoom in on a portion of a screen or to highlight a certain section or to highlight one window and turn the background and it's kind of, you know, fade it out a little bit. So it makes it really nice to be able to pan, zoom really smoothly. We used to do it with the way of using the Apple controls where you can actually, uh, you know, with the Apple control panel, you, system preferences, you can actually adjust to zoom in on your screen manually, like I'll kind of show you here. So you can like pull up here, and you can hold down the option and command keys and hit plus. And you can keep zooming in. That's what we used to do. But with the screen flow, you can actually do it after the fact, so you get a perfect zooming in and exactly what you need to highlight, so there's no delay in doing that. So that's the software that we use. That's how we get that really nice, smooth zooming. So hopefully, you all are liking that. And if you're producing instructional videos, that would be a really great program I would recommend. I used to use Snaps Pro, but it takes a long time to render the video after, you've done, after you're done recording. And there are lots of different export options that you've got within ScreenFlow as well. So that's what I use because it's video is ready right away. I can shut down the computer, edit it later. I do have to export it out and then take it into Final Cut to do the final editing. But that's the program that I use. So hopefully you find that's helpful. And uh, it also does, it can record it in HD. So we have widescreen, you get a lot more detail in our shots uh, of our video than what we used to be able to get. So there's more screen space. Hopefully you're finding that helpful. All right. Uh, the other question is from Ishak, and Ishak says, uh, in the start of the video, you have a Star Trek communicator. <laughs> yes, right here. Um, this is the uh, communicator I had. This is a toy that I had bought. He said, uh, can you please tell me where you got that from? I got this from like Walmart or something like that a ways back. And, you know, it has a little thing in here and little <laughs> things that light up. If you can see the lighting up very well. It's got little buttons on the side. You for the sound effects. That's kind of neat. It's a little toy. There are actually some better ones that are made. I bought this years ago. You may find something like this on eBay. But they have even better ones now uh, that you can find online. Let me show you um, some of the ones. Here's one that you can find that's really nice. It's much better than mine. And um, it's from entertainmentearth.com. You do a Google search for uh, Star Trek communicator. You, know, you could probably find this device. But there it is open and closed. It's a lot more realistic than mine. The, the grill up here has holes uh, through it so you can see through it just like they did on the show. Um, and has neat little sound effects that you can, you can get where it says, Enterprise, this is Kirk. You have little sound effects that it does. Um, there's also another site that you can go to and they actually have like phasers as well as tricorders. So anyway, there's the geek moment um, <laughs> if you find that helpful. He does have a serious uh, computer question, though. He says, I am into gaming and would like to know what you recommend, Windows or Mac? Well, I would recommend uh, Windows. Macs do have some games for them, but usually the games have historically come out on Windows first. Um, and Windows uh, has more titles for gaming if you're really into gaming. Mac's big advantage is if you want to use the software like their iLife suite, like for iMovie, iPhoto, things like that, or if you want to run specialized software, or if you just want to avoid viruses. But for computer gaming, um, a Mac can boot into Windows and do that, but you're going to pay a premium to have both operating systems. So I think, you know, really, a really good gaming PC, make sure it is a gaming PC, you have more options. One of the things I like about gaming PCs is you can often build your own. Customized boxes with, that light up, uh, the cases light up, really cool things like that. So if you're into gaming, you might appreciate doing that. Key thing for a gaming PC is your graphics card. That's going to be the most key thing that you get, and you can spend quite a bit of money just on the graphics card. 500 bucks uh, is likely what you'll spend. So that's what I would deal with. Um, so yeah, I would recommend Windows. Mac people, sorry. 
uh, the Mac OS is not the best uh, option for games. But you might also want to consider the Xbox as well as the Sony PlayStation. And the great thing about the Sony PlayStation is it's got a Blu-ray player built into it. So if you wanted to buy any Blu-ray high-definition DVDs, uh, you can do that and hook that up to your t TV. Okay? So, Ishaq, hopefully that answers your question. Next question I got, and the last one for this video, it's a short one, I'll have another one coming out soon. It says, why would my computer clock gain as much as five minutes per day? My guess is the clock basically keeps track of what time it is based upon a battery that's on your motherboard. And that's how things usually get uh, set. If the battery is going bad, then you're going to start, you're going to, start to have uh, time problems on your computer. But one of the things you can do is if it is connected to a network, you can have your computer automatically detect the network uh, and look for the correct time out on the internet and update it for you automatically. So if you go to, like say, on the Apple computer, and you'll find something similar to this in the Windows operating system as well. You go down here uh, to System Preferences or Control Panels for Windows. And then you would go to Date and Time right down here in this uh, fourth row, second one. And there we go. So there's your date and time. And there's a box here. You can check the set date and time automatically. And you can choose which one it is that you want, whether you're in Europe or Asia or in the US. You would use one of those uh, things. And it would check your time and automatically update it. That's what you should really do. That way your clock's automatically up to date. It'll automatically set things the way they should be, no matter daylight savings time. Now, you do want to make sure that you're in the right time zone. And that's where you can do that over here. Make sure you choose the right one, OK? Um, eh, you know, things you can do, you can adjust what's up there. <laughs> cool little things. All right. So hopefully that answers your question on how to fix that problem. Thanks for tuning in. More videos coming your way.